Kate knew that we wanted to kind of find a portal through which sound would travel back to 2006. And it was at a very early meeting on Series 2 where the notion of a bright white light was kind of introduced and this notion of perhaps it being a train and a train tunnel. So we were always working towards that as, as the end goal. And obviously it was through Matthew's development of Episode 8 and kind of SJ's imagination of how that bright white light would appear that kind of led to the ultimate sequence that you see on screen. He'd always had great ideas from the beginning about a tunnel and a white light. So what was great for me is we talked about that in the very beginning, in the very early stages of episode one, we'd always talked about this possible white light, and that's why in episode one there are elements of a white light coming through. When he has moments of pain, there's quite a bright overexposure in the camera, actually, which represents this white light of whatever is to come. The tunnel. The light. The railway the tunnel, yeah. 73 at the other. That's always talked about as an image in the story conferences. Yeah, because it's the physical manifestation of his dilemma. Mm. He's got 73 at one end, he's got 2006 at the other end. Which, which direction does he run? Mm. Uh, which, which was great. I, I like that. <laughs> You've done it, Sam. It's over. China! One simple move for new home. Home! Come back to us. When they see him waking up in 2006, I hope what people felt was um, total disappointment. That's what I want them to feel, disappointed, frustrated, frightened that this is the end of the show. Is this how it ends? It just ends with him mm. in these streets or wandering down the high street, you know? That's what I'm really hoping. I'm hoping people are, are desperately worried that that's how we're going to end it, that that's the ending we've chosen. I really didn't have a clue how they were going to end it. And I was really chuffed that they took him back to 2006 because the, the scenes, it just works really well, I think going back, it's like, it just doesn't seem right when he's in the present day. And he's desperately unhappy. This was the point we had been, you know, we had been anticipating as an audience. You, you know, you, you want, because Sam wants to, you want Sam to wake up and you know, we were really excited about the idea that we would kind of confound that expectation by then making the present day a place that actually we didn't want to be and he didn't want to be. And, you know, in, hopefully in order to, to get to the point where we, like Sam, want him, just want him to return to 1973 and be with those people who he's come to love and he's learnt so much from and has become a person, you know, he's, he's got to a place where he feels alive. Putting that uh, blue suit on again that we had at the beginning of episode one, um, it was weird, very strange, very, very strange. Uh, strange for everybody in the crew and the cast, everybody, you know, it was just odd. The first time I wrote him waking up in, in, in that hospital back in 2006, I felt very strange. Um, and I couldn't even bring myself to write... Um, I normally like to write interesting um, scene descriptions, not because anyone's going to see those, but because it's evocative and you want to evoke a feeling and a mood and an atmosphere in the reader because that person is going to direct your scene, it's going to, going to act in sure. it, going to light it, whatever. I couldn't bring myself to make those scenes sound interesting. I would just say, Sam's in another room, it's grey, you know, he's in a suit, it's blue. I just didn't want to excite anybody about 2006. Yeah, I wanted to just take the colour away from this modern world that really, there was nothing exciting in it. Everybody had to wear black, everybody was on a mobile phone, the colours were black, grey or blue, they are all on iPods. It was all, everybody's in their own insular world, even when he's on the bridge and everybody's on the phone and when he's sitting down in the courtyard, everybody's walking past him, nobody's paying him any attention, which is so different from the world we'd created in 1973. We'd always known that we wanted to kind of shoot both a 2007 element to the end of the series, but also we're aware that the majority of the series has taken place in 1973, so it was important that we saw each of our team operating together as the end of the show. And I think that what we worked hard at is having a very moving um, 
very um, rewarding kind of 2007 element to the show. It's a little longer than I think you think it will be. I think we thought it was going to be shorter earlier on, but because I wanted to use Somewhere Over the Rainbow, cause I was slightly dictated by the music and what I wanted to hear and how much I wanted it to continue for and what verses I needed. So I'd already set in my mind, and it needed to be long enough to get a sense of how lonely and cold this world was, but without making you go, oh, Christ, I can't bear this, I want to turn over. You know, it, you can't, you couldn't... I didn't want to make it that it was so depressing, but I needed to hint that it was so depressing for Sam. We wanted him back in 73, um, but it was how he got there, and I think that's where the suicide thing really sort of kicks in, is, is should he commit suicide? Mm. Is it suicide? I don't think it's suicide in his mind. It's not suicide at all. He's not running away from responsibility and from his life. He's That's actually true. running towards responsibility. He's running towards doing the right thing. He promised Annie he would be there for her and he's going back. I don't want to see it as a guy committing suicide where he just runs and jumps off. For me, I said I've got to create this leap of faith. He wasn't justified in 2006. He didn't, he wasn't a complete person in 2006. He only existed as a complete person in 73 when he had that stuff to rage against and fight against. I woke up in that place. And I told myself, I'm alive. And I was. In some ways, more than I've ever been. I mean, on one level, he chooses love, doesn't he? He does. He does it for the best reasons, yeah. He's not addicted to that world. He loves Annie. Mm. And he realises he'd rather have a fake, um, or, or if you like, a fantasy love that feels real than a real love that doesn't feel real. Um, I mean, the key scene which Matthew it, wrote, I think, for me, is that scene with his his mother when he says, look, I left some people in trouble. Mm. I don't know what to do. And she said, well, you, you do know what to do because, you know, I know you'll do the decent thing.